All right, guys, welcome back. Today we are going into the early television museum here in Hellyer. Let's go check it out, folks. Okay. Okay. All right, so suggested donations. $5 for adults, $2 for children. Let me go check some of this stuff out, folks. This is just a little uh, entryway here. All right, let's get in there, see what's up. All right, what's all this stuff? Oh, I've never seen anything like this. You seen any of this? Oh, that's pretty cool. They didn't have these when he was. <laughs> I thought that would be more among your age. What is this one? Oh, that's cool. There's a description of the Oh, really? So this set has the same. I don't know. What? Here, you guys want to read it? Go for it. It's a 9 inch TV from 1938. That's good. Wow. Model 709. This TV here. Which I don't know how you would watch that. Would you have to stand there and watch it? Better than years. I don't know. It's from 1950. Or wait, no, 1937. Okay. This one's from. The, oh, it's going up. Okay. <clears throat> from 1938. Look at this thing here. This is uh, what? 38 too? This one's kind of cool. Looks like the well. So this stuff in here. Would tell like the TV shows or something? <laughs> the TV guide? Homemade prototype pre-war pre set from 1939. can't touch anything so I'm not gonna touch anything. What is that? It says press. This is a 12 inch screen from 1937. Oh look it's turning on. Wait it's turning on? Wait. Oh yeah I remember the TVs used to... I can't see the screen anymore. Oh. But here goes, remember? What if I push it? What will I do? Will it come back on? Okay. Alright, so it stopped. Whatever. Here. But look. Oh, wait. So the mirror. Wait. Oh, there we go. So you'd watch it from the mirror. Okay. Look at that. Cool, huh? That's what turned it on. All right, early British, you look, the lights like automatically come on. Early British electronic sets, 1936 to 1939. We should have just went live. Hmm? Probably would have been easier. This one is from 1938. What is this thing? It's pretty cool. Hi hey, folks, how, how are you doing? You? So you guys already started walking through. Let me click your oh. monies. Okay. Go that way. Okay. Here you go. Outside of pushing these buttons like this, uh -huh. do not actually touch the sets, do not touch the knobs, and do not pick up anything off the shelves. Yeah. Other than that, that's it. Cool, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right, so this is from 1936. And what this one has a button. Press for British pre-war television tour. Okay. 
All right. Let's just press as it works. There are two there main go. components in an electronic television system. The camera tube, which converts an image to an electrical signal, and the picture tube, which converts that signal into a visible picture. Find the small green sign with one on it. Where is that? Oh, okay, this. <laughs> right. Big sign with one? Yeah. Right. By 1930, engineers had developed picture tubes that were suitable for television. On the shelf is a small one from the late 20s. However, a working camera tube still hadn't been developed. Two inventors were responsible for solving the problem. Philo Farnsworth grew up in rural Idaho and had no formal scientific education. He came up with an idea for a camera tube, got some investors, and moved to San Francisco. In 1927, he produced a crude picture from his camera. The problem was that it required too much light, and he never overcame that limitation. The other inventor was Vladimir Zworkin. Zworkin worked for Westinghouse in the 1920s, where he also made a camera tube and demonstrated it in the late 20s. In 1930, he went to work for RCA, the largest radio manufacturer at the time. RCA was run by David Sarnoff, a visionary who realized that television would be the next big thing, and who spent about $50 million during the Great Depression to develop TV. Zorkin's camera tube, the iconoscope, worked with a relatively low amount of light and allowed a practical television system to be developed. An early iconoscope camera tube was also on the shelf. By 1935, RCA had a working system, but Sarnoff decided not to start selling TV sets because the technology was expensive and unreliable and because the Great Depression was still going on. The British, however, had a government-run broadcasting entity primarily using RCA's technology. The sets in this room and in the small room next to it were made from 1936 to 1939. Below the shelf, you'll find a small green sign with two on it. This is the earliest British electronic set we have in our collection. It was made in 1936. Since there was only a single TV station in the country, the sets didn't have a channel selector knob. A modest set cost as much as a new car, so only about 19,000 were made during those three years. About 300 of these sets survived. To the left, find the small green sign with three on it. screen sets had mirrors to watch the picture. And this was because the picture tubes were about two and a half feet long and now okay. they vertically made it possible to make a more attractive camera. Well, let me know because can you let me know about Nearby, the Nearby, find the small green sign with four on it. Since television broadcasting was limited to a couple of hours a day, many of the sets had shortwave radios built in. When England declared war on Germany in 1939, television manufacturing and broadcasting ended in England. After you've had time to look around this room, find the green sign with American pre-war television. Go through the doorway and find the green audio tour box.
Press. So we're supposed to press this, right? Mm -hmm. uh -oh, so I bet something here. Oh, so this is the camera. Probably going there. Let's go eventually turn this thing on. I remember that hum from when the mm -hmm. TVs were warm up. Uh -huh. This is a nice one. Yeah, that's cool. I like this big one. Huh? Well, I would totally want to know. Put a Nintendo open there. Oh, you probably couldn't, but <laughs> somehow maybe. What is this? High voltage. Why is this thing? to turn it back on. Oh, I pushed the side one to turn it back on. I've been pushing the top one. Television and electrical living show. Westington House, made by RCA. This is a nice one too. It's a little screen one. This they used to have these old big boxes just to watch this little TV. Not <laughs> crazy. Old school plugs and stuff. You know how old the plugs are. What's this? Some radio. Uh, 1939, okay, 1939. Some more of these old plugs. Alright, so that's employee section only. Somebody's old thing. It's kind of cool, huh? This is a nice one. The mirror ones. Uh, this was introduced in 1939 at the World's Fair. Push that button on the side. Nothing there. Where is it? There we go. <laughs> there. Nice one. Cool buttons. General Electric. Cabinet TV, 12 inches. That probably was big back in the day. Huh? Yeah. Nine inch TV. Nineteen thirty nine. Hmm. Five inch TV. <laughs> Five inch. Looks like it had three channels. This one's from nineteen thirty nine with three channels. You see if this button will work. I know, I'm just trying to get there. It says press, but it didn't do anything. Oh, look, this one's on. What's it playing? Some kind of fire remover or something? I don't know. What is it? Five inch TV. Five inches. What's it say about it? Original cost $200. $200. Introduced at the 39 World Fair. What's the lowest cost set? Huge dog in here. Yeah. Oof, oof. Oh. oh wait, nipper the dog. 
I guess he's important. Nipper the dog. Let's see, it says first appeared in a 1899 painting by British scenic painter Francis Barraud. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Cool. This is a little tag nipper. Alright. That's a big magnifying glass. This one, magnifying lens, 1940. Maybe that's where Magnavox came from. Huh? Vladimir or something. Radio, radio engineer. Oh wow. What's this one? 1939. This cost 450 bucks. It's the Cool. Look at that. I had a record player or something like that. Awesome. Let's go this way. This was 1945 to 48. Cool. This had a, well, this had a record player and everything. Yeah. This be the one I want, like all in one. <laughs> well, look at this one. Dumont first with the finest in television. Isn't Dumont carpets or something? That one work? Next to this box, you will find a button that you can push to turn on the TV sets in this area. Oh, this one. During the war, engineers learned a lot about technology, especially from radar and aircraft communication that could be applied to television. As a result, the sets made right after the war were much simpler, more reliable, and cheaper. A typical 10 or 12 inch set cost about $400, compared to about $1,600 for a car. $1, to your left, find the small green sign with one on it. Yeah, we get that, yeah. First post war. These sets are from right after the war. As you can see, manufacturers were experimenting with all sorts of cabinet designs to find out what would sell. There were dozens of companies making sets. At the wall at the end of the room, Where? find the small green sign with two on it. Yeah, we got you. All these different TVs. In 1948, a 7 inch set was introduced. Yeah. Some with built in magnifiers. This might seem like a step backward, but it allowed sets to be sold for under $200. Cool. Because the cost of a television set kept dropping, television grew very rapidly. At the end of 1947, there were only 200,000 sets in the United States. By the end of 1953, six years later, there were 18 million, and half the homes in the country had TV. Directly in front of you, find the small green sign with three on it. What is that one? Directly in front of Right on there. Well, that's four. Uh, we'll just go where we want. It's fine. The Emerson Videograph Video Jukebox was made in 1947, before most people oh, had this seen television. The jukebox. Put a quarter in, and you could either listen to five songs from this jukebox, or watch TV for 30 minutes. For a quarter, you could watch Look TV. Look to your left, and find the small green sign. That's the big jukebox. Cool, to, uh, four, four down here. This is the Dumont Custom. Dumont it was custom. made to mount in a wall in your living room. Wall mount. There had to be a closet behind it for servicing, since something went wrong with the early sets frequently. Oh. A set like this was expensive, almost $2,000. 2000 okay, that's like the high now, set, Now, huh? go past the first row of curtains and look to your right. First At the end of the room, curtain. find a small green sign with five on it. Thank you. 
were sold to bars and clubs in the late 40s, when well, only a few people had TV in their homes. Okay. However, many people went to bars and clubs to watch television. Okay. The 1948 World Series was televised, Look and millions of people saw it at those locations. Wow. Look behind you, behind the far end of the room, and find a small green sign with six. Six. Okay, now let's go find the six. Oh, that's a TV highlight. Way back here. The Dumont Royal Saga was the largest black and white set ever made with a 30 inch screen. It was made in 1951 and cost almost $2,000. Wow, $2,000. That's nice though, even now I would want In the middle of this area, find a small green sign with seven on it. Seven. Okay, this one. Yeah. In the late 50s, manufacturers started using plastic and metal in their cabinets. The gold and red RCA portable and aqua Sylvania dual F are examples. Cool. Nearby, find the small green sign with eight on it. Eight. I see eight. I think that was over here eight years ago. Alright, what's about this eight? Hmm? The Philco Predicta is a space age. This yes. version has two parts. The screen that goes in front of the room and the control unit which goes next to your couch or chair. Okay. A heavy cable connects them. Cool. Now pass the next row of curtains and find the green audio control box for our television. These are the first curtains for this one. Oh, that was this one. This is a picture phone from 1969. Picture phone? It's your first like smartphone. Oh my. That's your first smartphone, like almost there, folks. Huh. I'm just gonna move. Alright. something to have in like a retro room. What does it say about it? Uh, Kubo, Kuba Comet. The Kubo Corporation manufactured the Comet from 1957 to 1962 in Wolfenburg, Model Germany. This set stands five flights seven and is over seven feet wide and weighs 289 pounds. It's a 23 inch set, year made 1962. Oh, that's freaking awesome, dude. Yeah, that's cool. I don't think you like that. Cool. Some background music. We'll be all right. Are we supposed to go this way? Mechanical. Oh, that's a bathroom. What's this? Felix the cat. Uh oh. RCA photo tube. Here's a Felix the cat.
we gotta press this button. Hear about these TVs. Maybe. The first color television system was invented by John Logie Baird, the same person who demonstrated the first working black and white system in 1926. On the wall, find the small green sign with one on it. Yes. A wheel containing segments of each of the three primary colors was placed in front of the camera and another one in front of the receiver. Huh. One after another, red, blue, and green images were transmitted. Huh. It happened so fast that your eye integrated the picture into a full color image. Huh. The same method, called the field sequential system, was used by CBS before World War II in an electronic version. To your left, Find the small green sign with two on it. Here? Yes, we got it. What about this one, huh? Well, let's see. After the war, CBS pressured the government to adopt a color system before black and white set sales took off. The main problem with the CBS system was that it wasn't compatible with black and white broadcasting. Two channels will be required in each city for each station one for color and one for black and white. RCA was working on a compatible system, but progress was slow. Finally, in 1950, the FCC, which regulates TV standards, agreed to hold a competition between the RCA compatible system and the CBS field sequential system to see which would be the standard for the United States. At the time, the RCA system was in the early stages of development and produced poor pictures. The CBS system produced excellent pictures, and the FCC adopted the CBS system. A few programs were broadcast in a few cities, including Columbus, in 1951. This is a studio monitor for the CBS system. To the left of it is a converter, which was placed in front of a black and white set to produce a color picture. RCA was making great progress on its compatible system, and by 1951, it was clear that they were successful. So CBS abandoned its system in late 1951. The RCA system was finally adopted by the FCC as the color standard in 1953. To the right, find the small green sign with a three on it. Over here, we found it. Okay, what about this one? Tell us. Here are the first color sets sold to the public in the spring of 1954. The Westinghouse and RCA sets had only 12-inch screens and cost over $1,000. At that time, you could get a very nice 21-inch black and white set for $250. As a result, only about 5,000 were sold. On the other side, find the small green sign with four on it. Um, over here, okay. There we go. Four. What about that one? During 1955, sets with 21 inch screens were introduced. Over the next 10 years, Why the sets got somewhat cheaper, but few were sold because of the cost, unreliability, and lack of many color programs. In the mid 60s, RCA teamed up with Walt Disney to produce a show called The Wonderful World of Color. Its purpose was to sell color TV sets, and it worked. 1970 was the first year in which more color sets were sold than black and white. Go to the end of the room where the picture tubes are and find the green sign that says broadcast equipment. Take the ramp down and find the green audio tour box to your left. Okay, this way I'm pretty sure. I'm go over this way. All right, Donald, we'll see you later. We gotta go this way. Look at all these things though. These are all the tubes and it's pretty cool. And what are these? Uh, this tube was made by the 40s. Look how big these were. Go to the next room, boys.
mostly television cameras and other broadcast equipment. In the middle of the floor are early cameras. The RCA TK31 was the first camera sold after World War II. It was used in TV stations all around the country through the 50s. Also on display are early color cameras from the 60s and 70s. The large camera behind the van is the RCA TK41, the first color camera made in 1954. We are in the process of restoring it. Next to the brand is an RCA TK1 monoscope camera. In the 40s and 50s, the monoscope produced a test pattern that was used after programming ended early in the morning to adjust the equipment in TV stations. The row of large cabinets is an early television transmitter. This one was owned by Channel 6 here in Columbus and was located at the top of the light tower in 1949. The large truck is a 1948 RCA mobile production van. This type of van was sold to TV stations around the country. This one was originally in Salt Lake City, Utah. It contains most of the original equipment from 1948, including three cameras. In 1960, it was sold to an educational station in Newark, Ohio, where it was used until 1970. It was then donated to the Ohio Historical Society, which is loaned it to us. In order to get a picture back to the station, a microwave dish was put on top of the truck. A similar dish was mounted on the TV station transmitting tower. These two dishes had to be aligned in order for them to work. Someone had to climb the tower in all kinds of weather to aim the dish. Originally, the truck didn't have air conditioning. Imagine being an engineer in the summer in Utah. The school's had to be closed since they needed darkness to view the monitors and the equipment generated a lot of heat. This ends our audio tour of the museum. Thank you. Feel free to take your time and look around. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for visiting the Early Television Museum. We appreciate we hope it. We'll see you back soon. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Till next time. Always remember: be happy, be healthy, and remember where TV came from, folks. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye.